Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight on my Annex 15 installation. I'm going to show you how to install Annex 15, run you through the installer setup. It's not substantially different from Annex 13. There are some new boot options and there are some new uh, installation options, a, a few. So let's take a look. We're going to run the installation in VirtualBox. I have here the 32-bit version of Annex 15 loaded in the virtual CD drive. Let's go ahead and start the machine. Now we'll go ahead and run this in full screen so you can see better, although I'm going to have black bars on the side, just ignore that. So you see we here we have the standard boot options. We have a safe mode for uh, that will attempt to, and a fail safe boot mode for an attempt to load simpler video drivers in case you happen to have a systems who whose video uh, is problematic. Now, there's been a lot of effort gone into making these modes uh, not, strictly speaking, necessary, but there have been some older video chipsets that have dropped out of the of the Linux kernel. Uh, one particularly problematic version was the Savage chipset. Um, I believe there are some ThinkPads out there in the world that have those, uh, various other laptops. Um, those are, uh, that's deprecated, so it's safer to go with the VESA driver. I think the system now detects that. I'm not particularly sure, but if it doesn't work off the uh, normal version, you have one of those chipsets, just try the safe boot mode first. So we have some other uh, boot options here. We'll come down. F1 gives us the help. And it's a fairly extensive help for a bootloader, um, including all the various persistence options if you're running off of a USB. We've got F2 gives us the ability to set our language. F3 gives us the ability to set our time zone. And if you set these now, the language and the time zone, if you set these now, then they will carry over through the install. F4 gives us some other options, some clock options. You can run a boot chart. You can set uh, uh, to auto mount all your hard drives on install. I mean on boot. So there's some options there that are nice for the live. This gives us our persistence menu. I'm not going to show this right now, but there are some uh, various persistence options in this menu. Particularly the frugal option is kind of interesting because that allows you to do a frugal install to your hard drive. I hope to do a video on that shortly. I'm still playing around with it. I've actually got a frugal install set up on an EPC netbook that uh, is working fairly nice. And it, the odd thing about frugal is it doesn't necessarily set up a bootloader, but you can use this option again off the USB stick to boot the frugal installation on the hard drive. So that's a pretty neat. Uh, it's uh, if that sounds complicated, it's not really. It's easier in practice. Hopefully, I'll show you that in another another video. F6 lets you set the default desktop environment. I know it looks like there's a lot, but there's really not. What we basically have are three options for each of the uh, desktops, ICE, uh, ICE WM, Fluxbox, and JWM. We have uh, a ROX desktop version, a Space FM, my personal favorite version, file manager version. And we also have a minimum where if you have a truly stripped down machine or an older, 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 low RAM machine, this will load a minimal version of the respective WM as well. You can also set a dark theme and a light theme. The default is actually the light theme and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave the defaults for now for the purposes of this video. Feel free to play. One of the nice things about Annex is it has so many options. I mean when we think about low spec hardware we don't we think oh my gosh we're going to be limited on what we can do. Well you are but Annex tries to give you as many options right on the CD as possible and yes this is still a CD download. So I'm going to select the default option. And we're going to boot. And you see we have the nice new um, Antics um, uh, wallpaper around the console. Uh, nice for you, shout out for you guys out there who are living in the console world. Now because I'm running a virtual box, this is actually going to give me a resolution that's slightly higher than my laptop can display. So I we are going to fix that real quick. This is not part of the usual installation. If you're on actual hardware, you're not going to have this issue. I'm going to set this to something we can all see comfortably. There we go. Now I got the black bars, but at least we can see it. 
and now we're going to run the installer. Now, you, now the installer says that you can choose between the repositories. It actually, the installer as it comes on the ISO has a problem in that uh, it does not honor the te choices for testing and SID unstable. Uh, it will always be set to Jesse stable. This is great. This is actually a good default right now, particularly with system with uh, with system D still working through testing and unstable. Uh, Antics doesn't use system D, so I suggest if you're new or if you're unsure, stick with the stable choice. If you want to use testing instead, you got two options. One, stop right now, go out to the command line and do a dist upgrade, which will upgrade the installer before you do the install, and that will fix the problem. Or do it after installation. It's not that big a deal to do either way. So I'm going to stick with the default, Jesse. Okay, now we're set to Jesse. Great, wonderful, fantastic installer, and we'll run. So here is the classic Mepis slash Antics installer. And you get some information over here, but the long and short is you don't need much room to install. If you want to run, to if you need to repartition a disk, you can do that here. It will launch Gparted. And you will have, you can do whatever you want to your, to your uh, disks. I have already partitioned my disk, but if you need to redo it, now is the time. Uh, I have a, a video, a couple videos now on partitioning drives with Gparted. Check them out if you need some help with that. But you can do that here. Once that's run, um, you can select custom and install on existing partitions if you have a particular place you want your uh, Antics installation to go. Uh, if it's the only thing on the drive, you can select auto install and it will do its thing, partitioning all the uh, repartitioning the drive for the bulk of it to be Antics and then a little swap partition at the end. Uh, I usually go with the custom install because it allows me to choose the partitions. So I'm going to choose the partition that I've already formatted. I've got a swap partition already, none are existing. If you click on it, you'll, you'll see it, but I've already, it's existing's fine. I'm going to keep my home partition on root, but you can choose a different one if you have another drive available, including another physical device. It should work in the uh, Annex 13. It did not work if your home partition was on a different physical drive, for instance, SDA versus SDB. Uh, it does now. And you can choose a couple other options here. Uh, Checking the disk, fine. Change default root label. This is new this time around with Annex 15. You can choose what label you want to give your device. I'm going to leave mine the default because it just doesn't matter to me that much. But if you want to name it something of your own choosing, uh, feel free. File system type, ext4. You can choose whatever you like. Even we have butterfs in here. I'm going to stick with ext4. Tried and true. Okay, so we're going to format the drive and go to town. Now this is the boring part of the video where we're basically going to watch a progress bar. So here we are back. That took about three, four minutes on my system. It all depended on the hardware and how fast your physical hardware can make the file copies. Now we're going to select Grub. We can put on the MBR, which is the what most people are going to want to do, or uh, which is the master boot record of the uh, device, the boot device. Or we can put it in the root partition, which is good if you already have a bootloader set up elsewhere. You can uh, chain load from that boot bat bootloader to the installation here. I'm going to leave it on the MBR. Yes, install. This will take a minute or two. Actually, it won't take that long. A couple, couple seconds, actually. There we are. Now we can give your computer a name. I'm going to leave the default here because it doesn't matter to me what its name is. Keyboard, you can select your keyboard. You select your locale. I'm going to leave mine as they are. If you use the local system clock, uh, a lot of Windows machines actually use local rather than UTC, which is the default Unix Linux setup. Fine. You can do that. Time zone. You can see it's already populated mine with Denver, which is the choice I made at the selection screen. And if you have some services that you want to disable, you can do that here. I actually don't have Bluetooth, uh, so I'm going to disable that. And I don't have a scanner, so I'm going to disable the scanner daemon. Otherwise, eh, we'll leave it alone. 
and click next now here's your uh, user accounts so I'm going to create a default user account and a root password now new to Annex 15 most of the time the password that is asked for is actually when when you need it for for permissions root permissions is actually the user password it's a super user now or a sudo um, type situation rather than becoming the root you can still become root all that still works and it's configurable in a control center hopefully I'll show that to you in a future video but uh, uh, just be aware that the prompt screens have changed a little bit that confuses some people sometimes because if you like me have been using Antix since Antix oh, 08 I guess uh, you'll realize that you have become trained to every time you see a prompt to type typing in your root password and that is not always the password that's being asked for now okay so we also say show passwords if you want to check your passwords you can do that if you want to skip the login you can click auto login and if you've made any changes to the live desktop like your wallpaper or different icons now well, you can you can select that now as well it'll carry over on the install I'm gonna leave the defaults for now for me hit next and that'll be it that's the last step the next step will be rebooting click auto login and if you've made any changes to the live desktop like your wallpaper or different icons now well, you can you can select that now as well it'll carry over on the install I'm gonna leave the defaults for now for me hit next and that'll be it that's the last step the next step will be rebooting okay finish and exported by the people yay for us do you want to reboot yes please actually if you watch the scrolling text you'll see that there's all sorts of uh, useful information presented in a nice color coded format if you're going to have scrolling text you might as well make it look good so here we are at the grub2 menu now again it is not the same as the bootloader on the live media so you don't have all the little options at the bottom of the screen that we had before this is just a straight up bootloader plain Jane nothing to write home about Again, remember, I'm still in VirtualBox here and running uh, so that you can see. So the black bars, that is an artifact of of, of me running this VirtualBox. Okay, here's the login prompt. And there we go. And here we are into our Antics installation. Next time around, I'll show you some tricks on desktop. the new desktop session app. You saw that little message that popped up, session is loading. There is now a rudimentary session manager running in the background, keeping track of various things like certain shortcut apps and the, and the like and what desktop you like to use. We'll cover that in a future video. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.